Hello everyone, and this is Fisherman's Village broadcast happy hour. And this we are at the Shack Art Center in downtown Everett, and this is sponsored by Tito's Vodka and Elysian Brewing. I'm Eva Walker, here with one of my favorite bands of all time, not just like of the Northwest, of all time, Delvon Lamar Organ Trio. Hello! Hello! Hey. You guys, as soon as the pandemic's over, you each got like two hour hugs coming. Just to <laughs> let Ready. you know, we can't do it now. Um, so before we get into current times, I don't want to start low and like sad and all that. Tell us about the last couple years. You had Close But No Cigar come out in 2016, mm -hmm. one of the best albums. Um, it as an artist, I could say it inspired my band's debut album, Cobain and Cornbread. That that album and then the compilation of Nigerian music were the two albums that inspired. So thank you guys for practically writing my record. Thanks really for like listening to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after that, you guys toured Europe. Um, I mean, you guys just just tell us about the last couple years. The last couple of years have been like pretty much a trip, man, because it was like everything just happened like abruptly you know we were doing tours like around the pacific northwest and we still slip out every now and then a little further but it's like i don't know it's like just all hit at the same time it's like oh we're going to europe it was like oh we're going to europe again oh we're going out of europe again so it's like to yeah. where you nearly live there yeah pretty much <laughs> and i was like do i live in the united states anymore <laughs> I tell you what I miss a lot is not moving that organ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's just like Delvon's next instrument's ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's also we've talked about you have a you have a fan. I don't remember what country he lives oh, in. Oh, Austria. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like Austria, yeah. pretty young, and you guys mm -hmm. kind of keep up with him, which I just think is so sweet. Can you just kind of share that? Story? Uh, shoot, I never pronounced his name right either. Uh, well, I know, I think in Spanish, if you would say it's Joaquin, Joaquin, but mm -hmm. he's in Austria and it's a different pronunciation and I can't rem remember exactly how to say it, but. No, you see, we keep up with him. He, I actually keep up with him on Instagram, so. Nice. But yeah, we he came to a show of ours in, uh, what was it? It was in Germany, as I remember. Mm -hmm. And then he actually jammed with us and stuff like that. He jammed. He got to jam with you guys. He got to jam and he's with that, yeah. fairly like he's he was like, like ten years old. He's like young. yeah, he's pretty young, right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So, and then yeah, he had to sit in the front row and hear me like blast out his ass. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I was like, he started in the front. <laughs> it, was like, it was rock and roll. I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, but he was great though. Still hear from him. We still keep up with him and stuff. He's playing guitar still. And, doing all that so it's 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 amazing man and like I, I miss it man we were supposed to go to brazil and stuff like that wow. and all those other places too yeah i'm gonna brazil. ask about that it's like mm -hmm. stuff that was going to happen and then you know mm -hmm. pandemic happens and then all of our stuff's canceled um so i wanted to mention this so close but no cigar was number one on the contemporary jazz chart and number three on the u.s jazz album chart wow what does that feel like to chart, that like not once, question. twice. It was weird, because I, I, I thought it was a joke at first. <laughs> like, because uh, I ain't gonna lie, I was in the bathroom, sitting there, <laughs> chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing nothing, I was just chilling. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then my wife, Miss Amy Novo, decided to bust the door down, like, <laughs> you guys are on the billboard chart. I was like, whatever. No, that wasn't, that wasn't sure, your reaction. Like, really? Yeah, yeah, I, it was. I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And I thought she was joking. And so I like Googled it and I was like, oh, wow, we really are. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like circulating around a uh, uh, Facebook and yeah, yeah, that's a trip in itself too, man. It's just like, didn't see that coming. Yeah. Wow. I love the like, just kind of humble attitude you have about that <laughs> i think i'm like more excited than he <laughs> 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 that was back in 2016 and i want to point out too um because i was reading about you guys i mean i thought i already knew everything there was to know about you guys because i fangirl over you guys but um delvon you were 
influence to play organ, and correct me if I'm wrong, to play organ and start playing organ after observing, you see I have Joe Doria's name written on there. Can you yep. talk about that? Well, uh, I used to play drums and trumpet, and I've been playing that since, I don't know, junior high school. And when I was about 22, 23, I ended up getting a call. Uh, it was Joe Doria and Dan Heck, and the drummer back then was uh, John Wicks. And he had went on the road with somebody, can't remember who it was. And so uh, Dan called me and uh, to play at the art bar. I don't know if anybody, you guys are... Too young to remember the art bar. <laughs> Probably. Kind of, kind of, kind of dating <laughs> myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was like every Wednesday at the art bar, and this is the first time I've seen anybody play organ. Like, well, you know, at church, the pastor's wife played organ, but I wasn't into music, and uh, I just like watched Joe do it every day, a week. I was like super fascinated by that because I've never, never seen that. I didn't know that was a thing. And then one day, a drummer comes in. I know who it is now. The drummer that came and sat in on drums and the first time I ever played organ was Julian McDonough. And I don't know if anybody's familiar, great drummer, lives up north. And um, he came and sat in. I didn't know who he was back then. And so I asked Joe if I could play organ. And I literally sat down at that organ and played it like I've been playing it the whole time. So. I basically learned how to play organ by watching Joe do it. Wow! I mean, Does that? I mean, were you playing piano or anything before nope, that? I was it was trumpet just... and drums. Wow! And then I kind of quit the trumpet and drums uh, cold turkey and went and found myself a, a little Hammond. Uh, drove it around in a U-Haul truck because I didn't have a van, so every time I got a gig, I had to rent a U-Haul truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just excited to play it. So. Yeah. It worked out. Wow. That's awesome. And do you guys remember your last gig before the lockdown? Canada. Like, Canada, yeah. Yeah, Canada. Calgary, yep. That was like my, I think, third show that I ever played with, with Delmon hmm. and Jimmy. <laughs> and yeah, it was like super quick. Like, played these three shows, quick run, and then it was like, all right, we're going on tour in April. And then, yeah, everything kind of stopped. Yeah. But I remember that date because. We did a live stream um, at Nectar a few nights ago, and that was the first time I've walked in to a venue and like been on a stage with lights and had a sound guy since February 29th was when we were in Calgary. So it's like this is like this is crazy. This is it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. To just walk on a stage, even though no one was there, it was just nice to be setting up your equipment, having people help you out, and and. During your, the last performance with like a crowd, did you think at all like, I mean, did you see this coming? I mean, people were talking about this weird virus thing going around. Um, was there any like, I don't, I don't know how I'm trying to ask this. Like, was there any feeling well, of like, this for me, might not see this for a like, while? Like, we didn't hear about the whole, like when, because in beginning of January, we did a, like New Year's Eve in uh, um, in uh, Ferndale, Wisconsin, and uh, me and Amy drove from Seattle to Wisconsin and uh, uh, Michigan. What was it? Wisconsin, Michigan. Oh, Michigan. 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 Oh, jeez. Yeah, what Ferndale. <laughs> Ferndale. <laughs> Ferndale. <laughs> yeah. So me and Amy drove to Michigan. Uh, and we flew uh, the, these guys out. Well, you wasn't there at the I time, there, but, yeah. but uh, and I remember listening kind of to the news, and you know, just going driving across country, and we heard like something going on, you know, over in China, and we were just like, oh man, that's crazy. And then about the time we made it to Wisconsin, I think there was like, oh yeah, there's like one person uh, in the states. So I was like, man, that's crazy. And then literally like we were on a 30 day tour and like at the end of that, it was just like, wow, this is really crazy. Cause about the time we got home, like everything started being like, yep, we get, everything's canceled. It's like one by one. And um, so yeah, it's it just weird, man. It's yeah. so abrupt. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it was like, like totally. Especially like I, I flew up that trip. You guys drove. You know, we did the Canada tour though. Like we did that show in Canada. Yeah. We I know I remember hearing about it and I said, Man, 
we better play the heck out of this because shoot, we don't know what's going to happen. And then sure enough, they said later on, they were like, they were like, these shows coming up, and I can't figure. Out. I was like, no, they're going to get canceled. I could just, I could feel it in my bones. I said, like, it's going to get this way, and I was like, yep. And it's just like when we did the the live stream, it was so crazy because at the end you hear like you hear people, ah, you know, all of a sudden it's just silence. Yeah, <laughs> like hi, we're talking to the camera. You know, yeah. it's really hard to talk with to nobody. Is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Like, yeah. Like I, I don't really know what to say. Like I can't. If I tell a joke and like there's no laugh at the end. It's, yeah. Like, it's kind of I'll laugh weird. you. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen because um, I was gonna mention. Uh, Thank you for bringing up streams. I was going to mention, because I've seen some of the streams you guys have done. I think they're from, is it from during, bleh, out of Spokane? I can't talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's my um, house, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, how's that been, you know, how's so, the live stream world? Well, we don't have to load nothing. Guys, we can no. just walk right <laughs> in. Yeah. 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 Just go in there and like, wake up and like two minutes before. All right, here we go. It's like, interesting it's like, for sure. It's kind of, like on one hand, it's fulfilling because you get to play music with other people. Um, on the other hand, like you wish that you... For me, I, at least I know, like, I've been getting, like, updates on my Facebook, and it'll be like, d 3 at this venue on this night, and it'll be, like, in Sweden or something. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'll be like, man, we should be playing in, like, Sweden tonight, but we're, like, playing in the basement of Dale Bob's house, and that's cool, but, like, yeah, it's just kind of a, a hard adjustment. Uh, we kind of feed off of fans and energy that you totally. get, like, every musician. So Absolutely. When you don't have that, you get done with the song, you're kind of like, <laughs> All right. Like, what's that? Like, it's just kind of like. Are they applauding? Yeah, Do they like, like it? It's just a hard thing to get. And that would be playing at the Drifting In Casino. Yeah. <laughs> to no one. No, but it's not like we've been able to use this time and get a little creative and write some new music and do a bunch of. Like, I don't think we've done a lot of new music over the last couple months, and I don't think any of that would have happened if we were just on the road touring at like we should be right mm -hmm. now. So I think, on the other hand, there's a silver lining where we were able to find this creative space and find time to actually write new stuff, as opposed to just like me getting thrown into the fire and being like, "Oh, these yeah. songs and we're playing yeah. tonight." Like, like here's so, sixty songs, go. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> it's been like a creative side that's kind of been nice. I'm glad you said that because that's different um, for different artists and bands. Like some people are like. Like we've been having this conversation, me and the crew and like the last band that I interviewed, where some of them are like, yeah, we haven't really been very creative. This isn't a very, this isn't an inspiring time for us. But for some people it's like, yeah, like we can get, like you said, the silver lining, we can get creative and we've been writing all this new music that we don't think yeah. we would have done if we were. So it's, it's just, it's amazing how that contrast between right. um, the artists, I'm glad that that's doing that for you guys. And so I was gonna ask also, um, during the pandemic, are some of the songs you made, is that a product of what's going to be on the I Told You So record that's coming out? In that's a double, that's a, that double yeah, that's that, No, we, those were recorded a long time ago. Oh, okay. But uh, we are working on uh, recording some for future releases. Like, we have a lot of things coming up. So uh, beyond that date, there's mm -hmm. a lot of things. So, um, but we're still, you know, we're still you know recording we're still laying down writing new music and oh. and eventually we're going to put it all out there i'm going to put you i'm going to put, you, put him on the spot right oh, now jesus <laughs> so <laughs> there's some songs okay. where this guy is actually singing <gasps> yay we don't know when that's going to be but we ain't going to say that he got this look on his face he's like yay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, which is also like you, you kind of got pushed. Are working on a, a, an idea of like um, incorporating musicians um, outside of D Lo 3, um, just kind of like a D Lo 3 and Friends type mm -hmm. deal. Um, so, working on that, trying some different things. Um, yes, I am going to attempt some vocals. And, um, Yay! Yeah, we'll it's see. tight. It's it's cool. I no, bet. He's, 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 he's had this look on his face like, nobody was supposed to do that. You know who else is a really good singer? Jimmy James. I found a video of him singing Foxy Lady yeah. on YouTube. Look it up. It's amazing. So yeah. just we're talking about yeah, people I singing. My mouth shut. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, uh, Dan. Yes. We randomly met in Reno. In October, yeah, in Reno. Um, <laughs> after a actually, festival. After the Offbeat Music Festival. Um, 
you were playing at St. James Infirmary, and I live literally like a 15 second walk out of the front door on the corner, and I walked down and, and caught the black tones at St. James, and then you guys were hanging out out front, and I like, I came up to you and I was like, hey, like, you know, D-Lo 3, and then you are like, yeah, and this was like way before I even talked to them about joining the band. Um, and so yeah, we had like made this musical connection and we sat outside and talked for a while. Yeah, we talked CD for a good while. Like, yeah. Um, it was really cool. And then like I was looking I think I was like, why are you all the way in Reno, man? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> like, I used to live in Seattle. Like I went to music school up here and that was probably about twelve years ago. And I moved back to Reno, so I had been there the the last ten years and so yeah, it was pretty weird like we had all these connections and like knew all these same musicians and then now here we are and you're you're interviewing me <laughs> i know it's <laughs> so weird yeah. that is awesome yeah. and you're playing with like one of my favorite bands this is really cool yeah it's pretty cool and so um i hope that you guys just stay being creative and that there's just a ton more material and more delvon singing and and jimmy james singing and all of that <laughs> and um <laughs> In addition to what you all do together, I know you guys, um, well, I know you, Jimmy James in particular, you have other projects you play with, like the True Loves. Um, and how's that been going through all this and balancing like both uh, bands? It's been, it, it's, it's been tough because it's a bigger band, mm -hmm. you know, and I you know, think- Yeah, you know, eight, eight people? Yeah, eight people. So when you're trying to get that many people together, and I think because everybody's worried about, you know, what's happening now and yeah. stuff and they're f kind of afraid to get together. So been just doing those little quarantine it's easier to social videos. distance with three people. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're doing those little, little quarantine videos where it's like everybody's in a little Brady Bunch box, <laughs> you know, yeah. and stuff like that. I'm and so I have a lovely like, no, oh, okay. <laughs> of a man named Jimmy. Wow. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't worry. I'm, I'm not Greg Brady, but um, Jimmy Brady. But anyway, so why do I just get started? <laughs> I start but yeah, it's 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 tough. I mean, they just been you know the band's been just doing quarantine videos and stuff like that. But otherwise, it's very tough with a big piece band. But still trying, you know, yeah. and stuff and getting stuff out there. And so. It's amazing what you yeah. do with. Um, with D-Lo 3 and with the True Loves band. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, you guys are, I don't know how you do what you do on guitar. It's, it, I've, I've taken pictures of his amp setup to try to match the same sound. He won't tell me anything about how he gets the sound. And you know what he tries to tell me? He tries to say, it's just the way I push down on the strings, Eva. And I'm like, that's, no, there's more <laughs> that you're not telling me. And um, I will get it out of them eventually. No, because let's be honest. I've watched her try to take videos of my hands. I've taken several videos of his hands. But who's to say if that's really my hands? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, with that being it's said. Called, those are actually called fake news. <laughs> this is Mr. Mix Village, the <laughs> broadcast happy hour. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The Bob Lamar organ trio and what may be Jimmy's hands, we're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for sitting and chatting with me. Thank Stay you. amazing. Thank you guys rock. Cheers. <laughs>